Mr. Dexter Fletcher, hello. How, how, how long? long? How long has it been? Five, five days? Five days? Five what? Days. Since Ghosted came out? Since... Uh, oh, we saw each other. Since we saw each other. Yeah, five days ago we were hanging out. That was lovely. At the, at the ham yard. It was good, wasn't it? It was fantastic. Oh, you enjoyed yourself? Oh, I had a brilliant time. I had yeah. a brilliant time. I oh, tell good. you what, it was nice to see... Um, uh, you and the the Lockstock crew back together, the Jasons, yeah. Nick, yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's been a while. I was going to say. It has been a while. I mean, we I, I don't know, I saw Statham a bit in LA last year, went to a concert with him. No, that must have been 2019, actually. So last year, it feels like last year because we've had a pandemic. But, you know, he came to a uh, uh, a screening of Rocket Man with an orchestra. Mm-hmm that he was at, which was great. And I hadn't seen him for a long time then, but he loved it. And then a few nights later, we Pete Townsend was that, that Rocket Man thing, and he invited us to go and see The Who play <laughs> with, with Liam Gallagher at the, at the Hollywood Bowl, as you do when you're hanging out in LA with all the stars. So we went to that gig together, sat in a little box there, and yeah, he's uh, I haven't seen him for a while, but the, uh, Jason State, uh, Fleming, I see all the time. He's yeah. a good mate. And Nick every now and again as well. So, yeah. yeah, I just thought it was a good excuse to get us all back together after 25 years. You know, I knew it would make an interesting snap. It did. And so, you know, trying to uh, muster up sort of uh, publicity for Ghosted, it just mm-hmm. seemed like a good time. So they all they all chipped in and turned up, which was great. Uh, so let, let's talk Let's talk Ghosted, obviously. Uh, mm. I loved it. It did Thank exactly you. what I, 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 I wanted it to do. You yeah. know, it's so within my wheelhouse of things I like. Uh, Action, comedy, bit yeah, of romance. romance. Yeah. yeah. Entertaining. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm very proud of it. It's uh it is. It's it doesn't it doesn't uh sort of it's not too challenging in terms of okay, am I gonna have to really sit down and stretch my intellect? It won't do that, but it will certainly entertain you, mm. that's the idea. So and you know, it's got those two incredible stars in it who are fantastic together. Mm. So uh yeah, I'm very I'm very proud of it, pleased with it. People seem to really enjoy it, you know, it's it's doing well on the old platform, so that's a new experience for me, rather than theatrical. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? Because like mm. audiences seem to to love action movies that come out on on streamers because it's an action movie. But yeah. do you think there is a stigma with critics? About and it does seem to be specific to action movies. Like take the Russo brothers, the Grey Man, yeah, for yeah. example, yeah, yeah. a movie that critics are like, mm, nah, mm. Mm-hmm. audiences bloody loved it. Yeah, and it's ju- it just seems to be that there's an agenda there. Like if it comes out on a streamer as opposed to cinemas, a company like I don't know, for example, Apple, big tech company, yeah. deep pockets, it's mm-hmm. an easy target. I uh, yeah, I, I think it'd be safe to assume, but I. I, I don't I don't know if there's an agenda as such. I mean, the thing about the streaming movies is, is that they're not really reliant on the critics because when there's the accessibility that your own home screen gives you, that means you don't have to get a babysitter, you don't have to travel into town, you don't have to go... Out, unless you're making a real big night of it, you'd like to go to the theatre and see something, and go mm. to the cinema. There's instant accessibility. So really, awareness is everything. And critical response sort of becomes secondary in a way because you can turn it off if you don't like it. Whereas if you paid the money and you're in the theatre and you're in the middle of the row and you've got to get past, you know, five people who are really enjoying it, eating their popcorn, you're less inclined to leave and you just sit there and go, oh, this film drives me up the wall. And I, you can't leave. But at home, you can go click, I'll watch something else. And so the data and the metrics become a completely different issue. And so I don't know how important that critical response is anymore because mm. I suppose where it would drive motivate you to go out of the house get up mm. and say am I going to take notice of this and go out of my house and spend money on it you're kind of already there so mm. you don't need to so whether there's some sort of they don't like it maybe they don't like that <laughs> yeah maybe I don't know you know it's hard to, it's hard it's hard to ascertain or whether the film is genuinely a piece of crap <laughs> which is the other conclusion the only conclusion you, you can draw but um you know ghosted is not critically well received mm. it's just not and mm. that's fine it's 20 30 people's opinion and that's wonderful whatever they're entitled to it but again audience wise it it's completely seems to be an irrelevance. So I have to take some solace in that mm. because obviously I don't want to read bad reviews and so I read three and I go, okay, I get it. Mm. It's not for them. 
But at the same time, the metrics, as that's the new key phrase, yeah. you can't have, you don't have box office anymore. You have completion is the big one. <laughs> How many people completed watching it? Yeah. And apparently that's a really high number. So Apple are like, you're go- you're great. You, you know, you've broken records. It's the biggest film ever in the history of of Apple. Which is fantastic. Yeah, which, which is, is fantastic. Great, yeah, and you yeah. and you look at uh, 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 yeah, it's not just Ghost. It's so many movies. There's this, a lot. Of, exactly. This disparity between audience reviews, audience yeah. say, all of that versus critics reviews, and it happens with such uh, frequency that you do then go, "There's something strange." This isn't just a review of the film. Yeah, that's why I think there has to be something else going on. I know, and is it, you go, is, are they trying to create some sort of relevance that? For for what it is that they do, because mm. I understand you know as the as the medium shifts and it changes and there's different outlets, there's different platforms and there's a different way that people access and consume their content, that the critical role becomes it has to evolve and change. Mm. And if it doesn't do that, then does it mean it's out of step with actually what people are responding to? It's so like you got to you can't just review. You, you can't make a film for platform uh, for for streaming the same way you make a theatrical you Mm. can't there's different metrics and there's different uh uh, 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 there's a different approach there has to be because like i say for even for the very reason that people can turn off very quickly you Mm. know in the beginning of ghosted i had i had i really loved a a long opening sequence of of uh anna de armas driving a car through the mountains Mm. which i'm trying to reference a lovely old film that i really love with goldie horn and chevy chase called foul play mm-hmm. which is a really lovely old 70s film that i loved when i went to the theater when i was a kid and it had all the and the starting credits were there the names of everyone and there's a barry manilow song playing and it's really of the moment and it's really cool and i wanted to really reference that and i built that beginning in my edit and i brought it to the studio and and the producers and they were like look we get what you're trying to do. i got a helicopter out and i filmed her driving along this road and and i was like this is great i love it you know 3 minute opening the song and and they said you can't because if it goes on and something doesn't happen yeah. in the first 30 seconds we know the data shows that people will just turn off mm. and i'm like okay well i don't want that so i make that adjustment i make that compromise and so what is a cinematic experience for me as the filmmaker, I'm trying to make something cinematic, becomes, okay, you've got to adjust, I've got to pivot. And I think that, well, look, it's entirely up to them because writers do, the critics do their own thing. Only I know as a filmmaker, that's what how I adjust to mm. try and get my audience, to, to retain my audience, you know. Yeah. So I, it's that... I, I sort of sometimes when I when 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 you read uh, like some critic reviews, I guess you know not to bang on about critics, but it was only because recently last month I think it was Seth Rogen had, yeah. had that quote where he said uh, that be actually I'll just read it so I don't screw yeah. up. I think if most critics knew how much it hurts the people who made the things yeah. that they are writing about, they would second guess the way they write these things. Which I think is quite a, a, a really powerful thing to say. I, I agree with them. That is giving them the consideration that they give a shit, <laughs> and and you know that's like that's really good to 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 give them that at least that consideration. Mm. But it it does impact you, of course it does, because you you want you don't make a film trying to make a bad film. You put look, you put two years of your life into it, and it's not two hours of sitting. And watching it and going, okay, you know, you you do. And what it does is it tends to make you lean into a more kind of bitter and angry place, mm. which is fine, you know, because that that's the nature of it. You gotta you gotta take it. If if it doesn't satisfy, it doesn't satisfy. But but yeah, you know, it's it's a lot of people, two years of their lives, a lot of sacrifice. You know, Alan Parker says it, he's like there's dysentery involved, there's divorce involved, there's absolute heartbreak, there's fights, there's screaming, there's, there's all sorts of things involved in making a film. Whereas all they got to do is turn their phone off for two hours and and then go, well, oh, I didn't like that. You know, I expected it to be more like this, or yeah. why is it not like that? You know, and 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 what you're doing creatively is you're endeavouring to deliver a tentpole movie that's commercial and satisfies four quadrants because in the case of Ghosted, it's it's a action rom-com mm. and that comes in a certain band, you know, and, but also how do I just subvert that genre but not throw the baby out with the bathwater, mm. still deliver what it wants, but just give it my mm. thing. And when people just shit all over it, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, and it takes yeah. you a couple of days of, of, of your friends going, no one wants to see you moping around. <laughs> so, you know. 
Well, as I said at the start, I, I loved it. I remember coming up to you afterwards after I'd just seen it going, look at that bus, mate, the bus you, thing, because, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm an action well, junkie, so if something gives me those goosebumps that I get, and the I, is it a spoiler? I'm going to say it anyway. Well. The bus 180. Yeah, like. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm very proud of it. I, you know, and say, look, I get it. It's not for everybody, mm. but it seems like it's for more people than 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 less, which is the main the main thing. And you, you you sort of mentioned sort of like the difference in like you know you've got your cinematic opening your three minute thing and it's yeah. like it's a, it's it's for a streamer so there are certain considerations you have to make. Yeah. Did you see what uh, I think it was Joe Russo was saying the other day? He was talking about AI and yeah. how he reckons within two years now yeah. AI is going to be making feature films. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't put it past it i mean you know you go you go to the you know, moma in, in new york and there's art on the wall that is made by ai and then there's a million people standing around watching it constantly change and evolve and mm-hmm. and fold back around in on itself and it's mesmeric mm-hmm. and and it does it and it is i mean yeah i'm sure there is there, look i'm sure they'd be gr- really happy if they could crack the code mm-hmm. of what's the formula that's going to deliver that perfect movie every time because there's so much money and effort involved that if they had an algorithm or a you know a very smart bit of ai that could deliver that with a 100% you know uh, uh, success rate then of course they're going to do it uh, I, Somewhere along the line, you are going to have to still have the human element involved and a creative spark to say, these are the elements that I want within that. Mm. And and it's not like AI can generate it apropos of nothing. You still have to say, write an action film. And even if it's just that one line, it still has to come from a person to tell it what you want. Yeah. I suppose it could be the only, the only kernel of like... Well, we're not completely redundant <laughs> in the process. I, I at least yeah. farted into the microphone and it, it analysed that and wrote me a piece of shit. Uh, yeah, I think his... What was the ultimate thing he said? It was, this is where it sort of started to get into the scary. Uh, yeah. That you could go home after work and say, uh, hey, I want a movie starring my photo real avatar, a Marilyn Monroe's photo real avatar. I want it yeah. to be a rom-com because I've had a rough day. Yeah. And I then mean, you'll get it. Yeah. Yeah, well, but even so, you've got to be able to think that up. That's a still, mm. that's a fairly, I mean, that's the one thing that I can, you can hold on to. And and there is still enough analog people in the world who are not going to, who are going to be like, mm. give me something that, you know, I, 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 I hark back to where I can see real people. Look, you do, you, you come up with ideas and concepts for films and now it gets to the point where I can choose a particular actor in a particular ser- location or in a particular set of clothes on a particular vehicle at a particular time of day mm. and give all of that and it will give me 20 different versions of that. But how connected I feel to it is another matter. Mm. Uh, and and how much it, it, it roughly resembles what it is that I'm talking about. But I still have to get there and create that with a team. I still want to do that because it's... For me, anyway, even with working with that sort of early, well, it's not that early, but working with that kind of technology, I know, that, like, okay, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want that. You know, it's a process of elimination. So what is it that I do want? And I can only do that really through making it realised actually rather than than virtually. Mm. Hmm. Um, so there's another thing I want to talk to you about. What was it, 20... God, was it 2020 or 2021? 2021, you and I last sat down and uh, you were just about to go to LA to do was. the offer. Yes. Holy shit, what uh-huh. a series, man. Oh, right, right. Yeah, and I'm really early on. Weirdly, yeah, it was, yeah. it was, it was I, I just started it literally this weekend because uh, Sanjeev uh, Basco was uh, at yeah, your thing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, Sanjeev's there. Yeah, Have yeah, you seen it? Break. And I was like, no. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Go and watch it. <laughs> Oh my God, that must have been so yeah. much fun. I mean, the performances you've got uh, from uh, Bern Gorman, yeah. uh, like um, as a Matthew Charles, Good, Ma- oh, oh, Charlie Blue Charlie Blue yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Charlie Matthew Blue-Dorn. Good as Bob Evans. He's amazing. He's amazing. I mean, you sort of go, what a what a larger <laughs> than life performance, and you think back yeah. to that period in history when mm. they, these characters were that big uh, and yeah. that gregarious there, there is people like that out there anyway you go you know you go to LA there's people like that they're, they're larger than life you've got to be there's you people want to make their impact but Evans yeah was like that it's not it's not really that exa- an exaggeration it's an amazing performance from Matthew because he's a lot more understated I mean you know when he, when he has a drink he can be quite large and colourful <laughs> That's when I that's, saw him after the yeah. Maverick premiere in London. Oh, and you're yeah. going, you're going, he's not like that. I'm like, that's not. No, you're right, he is. 
<laughs> no, but he came to work on that. He was quite nervous, so he was a bit more kind of focused and and, and, and kind of contained. And it sort of emerged, yeah. you know, and that's when everyone sort of went, "Oh shit, look at this! Yeah. This is amazing." Yeah. But it's it's the same with all of those characters, you know. When you're creating a story and a, a mythology about a period in time, about a film that is beloved by so many people, mm. that that again, you're on a bit, you know, critically, it did not do well, you know. That that's a series that people, because they hold that film in such reverence, reverence mm. that. To, to tackle that subject in such a way, there's an ownership of it, I think, that they feel that they have, that I can't possibly live up to their imagined version of what the making of The Godfather is. All I can do is do the research and go, these were the players, you know, it's one person's stories. It's it's um, Al Ruddy's yeah. version of events. And everyone's version's different, of course it is. Mm. Um, but... Again, people watch it, you know, like some people come say, I just love it. They just love it, love it, love it, you know, and they watch it again and again, and and I'm perfectly happy with that, mm. you know. Uh, I mean, no spoilers, because I, like I said, I've just started, so I'm, I'm still okay. waiting to see whether they actually get to make The Godfather. So, oh, like, that's interesting. You know. Yeah, you're going to find that interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah there's, there's some real twists and turns on that. Um, uh, what was the other thing we were talking about? Oh, yeah, that's the other thing we were talking about. So, Sherlock 3, uh, yeah. literally two years ago, uh, almost to the day, we yeah. were talking about Sherlock 3. You'd done some work on it. Yeah. Um, then COVID, obviously, mm. happened. And just by chance, yesterday, uh, Susan Downey's saying she did, yeah. she's saying that it's a it's a priority. You know, amazing. We, I mean, what's what's your take? Is it is it is there movement? Uh, not not from me. I mean, I when I read that as well, that's that was the first I'd heard about it in a while. So mm. you know, look, it is Robert's baby at the end of the day, and he's going to do it in the way that he does it. I, I haven't heard anything as yet. I've mm. got my fingers crossed, but you know, it's it, it is what it is, and and. I know that's a really important and personal uh, project for him, mm. and and obviously there's a there's a lot riding on it. The expectation levels are super high and stuff. Uh, um, uh, yeah, like I say, I'd hope to get a call, but at the same time, maybe he's completely reimagining it and rethinking it, and is going to pull a different team and a different creative, uh, you know, team together, and and that'd be wonderful. Either way, everybody wins because if he makes it, that's what we all want. Mm. So. Um, and it, and it lies with him, so... But I haven't heard it, and my phone's not rung yet. Right, right, that's right. That's the scoop you're looking for. No, no, not at all. I was just... It's, it's what you said, because it feels like such a non-statement. It's like, well, obviously, <laughs> you're going to yeah. want to make it at some point. Yeah. But the, the traction it generated, like... Uh, exactly. I know, exactly. That's the, that's what I mean. It is obviously so important. It's mm. such a big thing to... to it, they're not going into it lightly, mm. and... Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, I you know, either way, I I want I want only the best for it because he's he's incredible and she's brilliant as well, Susan. Mm. She's brilliant. All right, then. Are you are you ready, Dexter? I don't think so, but I'm going to do my <laughs> best. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to head to our virtual cinema. You are our guide. We are your audience. Let's go oh, on man. a trip to the movies. Oh, is there some sort of music that comes in? Here? Oh yeah, it's very well produced. Is it like by is it, me? Is it like um, that that big organ? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's more grand than that. It's grander. It's, it's grander. Oh, uh, it's swelling. Imagine the, the grandest oh, music that you could imagine. Oh, wonderful. So Here we are. We push open the doors to our temple of film and find ourselves in the foyer. There's an excited buzz as there always is in a cinema foyer. The hum of anticipation. It's your perfect cinema trip, Dexter. Who are you taking, living or dead, to go with you? Oh, that, that's right. That was the first one. Who am I taking? Oh, man, I don't even know what film I'm seeing. I've not thought about this at all. <laughs> well, I suppose my first thought goes to my wife, Dahlia. Yeah. Because she and I have very different tastes in film. She, mm. you know, she comes from Lithuania originally and grew up in the old Soviet Union. So the, she would watch, you know, like third or fourth generation copies of video of, of The Godfather and, and, and Scarface, you know, that were really degraded. And Paris, Texas is a big love. Um but that was all in secret. So I think I might be taking Dahlia because uh, I, I, there's certain films I need her to see and want her to see because we work together closely now. The other thought I had was Paul Thomas Anderson. I would like to go to the cinema with him just to hear his reaction to stuff. So if I'm allowed to take two people, it'd be them. I, mean, I know it's, 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 I'm pushing the bounds already of the... Uh, literally. Yeah. Literally breaking, breaking the format. Breaking all the rules. Yeah. yeah, breaking the format in half. I love it. Yeah. 
I love it. What did, what's the, I was telling a writer friend of mine, one of Paul Thomas Anderson's quotes, and she did not like it, which is like, he does, he, I think it's a really interesting quote. I was telling you, I was doing a bit of writing recently, and it's yeah. like, um, I don't believe in rewriting, was the bottom line of what he was saying. It was wow. like, I write, but I don't rewrite, which when you think of his work, you're like, you must do that. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Like, I wonder, does he mean that he doesn't rewrite for other people? <laughs> You've got to hope. <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I can imagine that he means. I don't rewrite. Jesus, that's some level of confidence that I could only aspire to. <laughs> wow. So you want to take both Darla and, uh, and PTA. Yeah, let's, let's, take, let's take PTA. Normally, normally I enforce one you, guest, you do. but on this particular occasion, okay, you can have... Yeah. I know, I'm, I'm being... yeah. PTA and so, Dahlia. Dar Dahlia's sort of... She's, she's with another mate of her own. She's, she's just happens <laughs> to be be, going... A third person! No, 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 they're, but they're, they're not with us. It's just me and Paul, and Dahlia just happens to be there. Oh, hi! She's going to see something on a different screen. That's normally what happens. We'll go to a cinema, and she'll go and see something at a different screen from me. Really? Really? Has, has been known. Oh my gosh. Because yeah. you have differing tastes? Or... We do, yeah. You know, I mean, I, if I want to go and watch some, you know, sci fi or something, I think it was 12 Monkeys that I went, it was years ago when we first started going out together. We first got together. Yeah, she went and saw something else. Some, something, yeah, something French. I can't remember what. Oh, wow. So we were like, okay, they're both on the same theatre, let's go. <laughs> so we sort of went together, but we didn't. Is one of you not left waiting in the foyer? If it's like that's one has a longer movie at the end, you just sort of... There's, there's always that possibility. <laughs> there, is, there is that. Yeah. God, we can hang out a bit. Reminds me of my first ever trip to the cinema. I thought I was mm. going to see Aliens because my mum was going to see Aliens. Yeah. I got to the cinema. It was me, my mum, my gran, yeah. and my little brother. And uh, there was a big alien, Queen Alien, like sculpture in the foyer. Amazing. And I was like, oh my God, I'm going to see Aliens. Yeah. And we were walked through. I was about six years old. And then suddenly we turned right into Care Bears the movie yeah. while my mum watched Aliens. See, there you go. It's exactly the same principle. <laughs> I didn't want to watch Care Bears the movie, though. Did you wanted I? to watch Aliens with of your mum? Of course, yeah. And did she come and did she say anything about it? Did yeah, she, she go, it was amazing? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, she came out. That was Care Bears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish I could say I walked out, but I was six, so I had to sit through you the whole to go. bloody thing. So you hate Care Bears now? <sighs> I mean, I never really loved like, them. Like, in the first place, no. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, yourself and Paul Thomas Anderson yeah. with Dahlia in, somewhere in the background, in, a, in yeah. another screen, maybe yeah. or towards the back. Okay. <laughs> now there's a clock on the wall in the foyer. It reads a specific time. What time of day are we going to the cinema? Uh, I think it's like two forty in the afternoon. Great. I'm, I'm digging that kind of vibe, mm -hmm. you know, because you come out. You still got a lot of the day left. You still got plenty of time to talk about it. If you're going too late, it's like it's late. I'll check you later. Mm. But if it's really good or if it's really bad, and you've got PTA there, you want to have a bit of time to <laughs> dissect and kind of analyse what it is you've seen and what's good and why, and what's bad and why, and and why the hell you're there. So I think I would go that, and possibly if it's really good, you go and watch it again. <laughs> like in the good old days, you just used to just. It'd be double feature out, and you just sort of slunk down in your seat and just let it go round again. And you've watched the film a couple of times, <laughs> but you can't do that anymore. Uh, I was thinking about uh, this because obviously two forty in the afternoon. It's a slightly quieter screen. Yeah, it's quieter as well. And there's that. Uh, there's a line from Al Ruddy, played by Miles Teller in The Offer, where he's he's you know, and it's 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 literally the purpose of this question because he talks about the magic of being in a room with three hundred mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. all experiencing yeah, yeah. the same thing at the same time mm -hmm. in real time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, would you not like that? Because you're going to a quieter screen. I am. I am. I yeah. I I do. I do love that. Um, but equally, there's something I find really amazing, and I don't know if it's just the the uh, the flash getting me. But there's something you know, you go to those afternoon screenings, like very few people there, yeah. and you're just in that big theatre on your own, yeah. and you just because there's the other thing of when there is loads of people, you've got the, <laughs> and the, and the first twenty minutes is always is always you know polluted by <laughs> consumption. Uh, and and noisy consumption of of sundry goods mm. that that I, I I can find a little bit I need to zone that out but yeah no look there is the there is no sitting in a dark space with a group of other people being told a story in the light and of of the of the screen that that is the shared experience that is really undeniably great because I watched uh, I watched Dungeons and Dragons recently and I was on my own like they put a screening on just for me which was there you go fine. 
But at the same time, yeah, that's I a was lonely like, experience. Are you, it's one of those movies where you feel like, because I sometimes go, have I got a weird sense of humour? Is that funny? Yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. I need verification from other people. That's, it's like, that's funny. I think you're right. It depends what movie you're going to see. Mm. I think it does really depend on what you're going to see. Mm. I mean, but I don't know. I just think about, I suppose, when when I was first, go, remember going, my earliest recollections of going to the theater, cinema was in Muswell Hill with the Odeon in Muswell Hill. Oh, yeah. And it, it's not an Odeon anymore, I don't think, but it's three screens. And we, we'd be like, go and see... Blazing Saddles. We'd like bunk off school and go and see Blazing Saddles, or we'd come out early and we. I remember going to see Elephant Man there with a whole bunch of mates from school because I was in it. But also it was a, but it was a really good time. Going in the daylight was something really good. But I don't know if that's just because I sort of equate it to that fond childhood memory, you know, because yeah. and the jerk and stuff like that it was really good thing to go and. Because I think you'd go with your mates and so you'd laugh anyway. You were in it wasn't sort of like going and now as an adult on your own. So when you went with your mates to see the elephant man that you were in, yeah. were, were they like, Well, we wouldn't normally peak the elephant man, it's not really in our wheel. I don't house. know if they would have done, no. It was it's not a laugh a minute yeah. film, is it? <laughs> it's not it's not it's not generally the film that fourteen year olds <laughs> would choose probably to go and see. Uh I, I probably did a bit of showing off and coercing. I remember going to see Bugsy Malone there as well, funny enough. Oh, really? Yeah, when I was 10. In, in Muzzle Hill Odeon, my mum drove us up there. Me and my brothers, yeah. Uh, it's a few of us, yeah. And that was that was always good. And Saturday Morning Pictures was always a riot, you know, that sort of thing. It was a lovely little cinema down on the North Circular Road. Saturday morning, you just go for 10 pence or whatever it was. And that was always chaos. That was always, <laughs> and I think there was a part of me that... that I wanted to watch the films and the chaos sort of I found distracting. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, no wonder you're picking two forty in the afternoon yeah. at a nice quiet cinema, otherwise you're gonna get like PTSD. Yeah. Right? So exactly. I get it. I get For it. PTA. <laughs> it's not good. All right. So you have booked the trick tickets for our, our trip. And um, which seat have you chosen in the auditorium? Where are we sitting? I'm gonna go fairly traditional. I'm gonna go sort of like center. Centre, so in the middle, quite far back. If there was a balcony, I would go front of the balcony as well, the circle. I, I quite that. like that. Yeah, kind of looking. I sort of. I don't know. Maybe it's my old theatrical kind of self. I, I do like that. Although, you know, they're not the best seats in the house. But there's some. I just like being up there. Again, I think it's my old Muswell Hill experience because it was a big theatre, and then of course down where the stalls used to be, they'd built the two smaller screens. Screen one and two. So whenever you went to screen one, you were looking down over the top of the actual other cinemas that they'd built down in the stalls and then watching the big major screen, but you were always up in the in the circle. I've been there, sat in that. Yeah, that, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. There's that great centre light that runs down the middle and there's a great old Art Deco clock in mm. there as well. And I really do love it because it's, it's the cinema I went to and, and there was a couple in Wood Green and Turpike Lane as well. Anyway, um, so, uh, yeah, I... I I think if I was in the circle, I'd be front and centre, and and if I'm if I'm yeah going more traditional, I'd sort of like to be I like to be in the middle, um, and get a good, uh, yeah a good straight on view of what's going on. Mm. Yeah. All right. Fine. Don't like being too close. That's not good. Don't like looking up at people. <laughs> I was, uh, someone once said, I mean, you probably know as a filmmaker, apparently the the middle seats are about, I think it's literally the middle of the middle in the stalls is where the perfect sound mix you can hear as an, as an yeah, audience that, member. That's what they're going to be going for as mm. well. Exactly. I mean, you know, Atmos is amazing now anyway, and you oh. get it, you get, you get a sense of, of, of space and, and, and uh, environment anyway. But yeah, if you're centre, centre, you're getting really good. Really good sound as well. Okay, so I'm putting you at the front of the balcony or centre centre. You'll, <laughs> yeah. you'll decide in the moment. Okay, yeah, oh. exactly. Yeah, oh. I'll, I'll see what, what the layout of the theatre is. All right, final thing we're going to do before... Sounds we... like I'm at Muswell Hill no matter what. <laughs> whatever, whatever I'm doing. Uh, the final thing we've got to do before we leave the foyer and head towards the auditorium. Wonderful smells in the foyer. Yeah. All manner of foodstuffs are available. What are you choosing to eat? I am choosing a sweet popcorn. I will be having a sweet popcorn. I do I do go for that. A butter kiss, mm -hmm. it used to be called. Yep. I don't know if it still is. Um, and 
I used to rather enjoy getting a packet of opal fruits as well. <laughs> a pack of opal fruits, <laughs> chawing my way through those, oh. or revels, anything that's got a bit of a bit of diversity to it. You know, a bit of a surprise. Yep. Oh, that's good. You don't know in the dark. You don't know it's in the be dark. Anything. The fruit gums are always good, but they tend to pull your teeth out. Yep. So you got to watch them. Um, and I, I'm, I'm quite partial to a hot dog occasionally. Are you serious? We yeah. rarely get people yeah. going for the hot dog. I know because it's it's lips and arseholes and everybody knows <laughs> that. So it's generally as a rule of thumb, that is gonna once you know that, it's gonna be enough to put you off. But there's something reassuring and and tasty about that that you kind of Yeah, I just I like if I'm going for the whole experience, if I if all bets are off and I don't have to worry about carbs. Yep. Or what it is that I'm actually eating, mm -hmm. some mysterious meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I find that more agreeable than nachos and all of that nonsense. I bet you, with the noise factor, you're thinking about. Don't, yeah, you see, I mean, the good thing about a hot dog is it's quiet. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's, there's not much resistance to a hot dog. <laughs> and this is a virtual cinema as well, so these are virtual lips and arseholes you're eating. Uh, so well, there's no consequence. Better. Exactly, yep. exactly. And, and so I don't have to worry about that. Yep. I might have two then. <laughs> and uh, and we're dipping back. I, I, where are we going? We're reaching through a wormhole back to the 1980s for opal fruits, which yeah. no longer exists. Oh, don't they? The Starburst now. Oh, is that what they're called? They're called, they're called yeah, Starburst. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A long time since I've eaten any. We homogenised everything. I, would have, I, I was big on the fruit gums as well. Okay, they. I think they still exist. Did they? Yeah, Maybe. they're very hard though, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really hard. Yeah. yeah I, 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 that, I used to get them in a little cardboard box. I used to love yeah. that. And, and the opal fruits would come in, in a packet. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking back to my early childhood. I like this. <laughs> we, we, we've trip. gone on a journey. It feels like not only are we a, a, a virtual cinema, we've travelled back to the only Muswell Hill. I know yeah. the one. Like, in, in the, in, when, where are we saying? Mid-80s? Yeah, mid-80s. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mid yeah. yeah, early 80s even. What, 77 I started there at school. So, yeah, in about 80, 82 in its heyday. Okay, I'm going to write that down. We're going at um, two forty. It, but it's it's a uh, yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's an everyman now, isn't it? It is an everyman now. Yeah, yeah. I must go. I'd love to go. They've improved it. The first time I went, yeah, and they would sort of like I was surprised it was open. And, and uh, no shade on everyman because it was really just like bought it and yeah. turned it into an everyman. But it was one of those where there was like a bulb on a wire hanging right. down above the chairs and they left wow. it on. And I, I literally had to go and go, can, sorry, can Please, you turn I'm the you. bulb <laughs> off that's hanging above my chair so I can watch this movie? But it's got that's a lot good. better, a lot better since I'm going to go. Mm. I'm going to go and make a big deal of it. Right, we're leaving the foyer. We're going to walk right. down the corridor towards the auditorium. Now, I'm going to put up posters along the cinema wall that illustrate oh, some yeah. of your most important movie memories. And the first poster mm. depicts your fondest movie memory. Huh. It's tricky. I, I got a few. Funny enough, I was talking to my dear grey-haired old mother today about Paris. Funny enough, and my brother, Graham when he was an actor many years ago, he's no longer with us, unfortunately, but anyway, uh, uh, but he went and made a film in Paris called A Little Romance with a very young Diane Lane and Laurence Olivier. And um, we went to Paris to visit him. I think George Roy Hill directed it. Wow. Yeah. Um, and and we, we, it was around the time of Saturday Night Fever, which I was mad desperate to go and see but I was not old enough. But there was a rumour that in France, the cinema going age <laughs> was younger and you could get in if you were if you were the right age. So I was convinced that I was going to get to see Saturday Night Fever in France, in Paris, with subtitles. Um, but even then, they didn't let us in. They wouldn't <laughs> let me in. Even though I was a, a very small 12-year-old or whatever, whatever year it was. I can't remember. So that's a kind of fond memory in a way because she then took me to see this David Carradine film that wasn't, it was sort of like loosely based on Kung Fu. He was this wandering monk-like character with a flute who was blind, I think. Anyway, I, I don't remember the film fully well. But there was another time there, we went and saw American Graffiti. Oh, wow. And that was really seminal for me in a lot of ways um, because I think it opened up Americana to me in a way that, that film does if you if you're not an American. I mean, I know the Americans seem to be obsessed with their formative high school years. There's a lot of films about that, 
that we just don't seem to want to make. <laughs> <laughs> but the, you know, I, mean, I suppose the closest we've got is the in betweeners. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's weird, isn't it? But, like, but I, Americans. I know more about American high school than yeah. I do about sort of British high school yeah. because I've been indoctrinated by all the movies they that came did, over. Even back in the day, even like there's films called Porkies mm-hmm. and all these really sort of slightly off, you know, films that they would they would deliver to us then or Animal House yep. you know it's all about their formative college years and, and stuff like that anyway but I remember American Graffiti was really amazing because it was just yeah Harrison Ford and Ron Howard and you know yeah. all these incredible people in it um, uh, so that's I think that would definitely be up there American Graffiti okay and probably Saturday Night Fever even though I didn't get to see it then <laughs> It's it's so so it is a very French thing, isn't it? Just come and see the movie. It doesn't yeah. matter how old you yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, it's a movie. If your parents are busy, you come. <laughs> we, I was on a French residential at school, and uh, we all wanted to go see Pulp Fiction. It was yeah. ju- just come out, and the teachers went, "No, you can't see Pulp Fiction, we, we, even though they're letting you in. We're not letting right. you see Pulp Fiction." So they took us to see uh, the Color of Care Night. Is. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the, the Color of Night, the erotic Bruce Willis <laughs> oh, uh, <right>. sort of <laughs> sex thriller, and it was like, "This is worse than yeah, Pulp Fiction." Yeah, this is like, yeah. No, my my mum didn't do that. <laughs> Good. Uh, the other one, I, the other one I really loved was around that time was King Kong with Jessica Lange oh. and Jeff Bridges as well. That that was another big one that would be on my nostalgic memory lane. All right, uh, well, wall of anyway. Well, I mean, I'm getting off piece. No, no, no. I'm just trying to decide which one we're going to put up. Oh, I mean, oh. we got we got King Kong here. We got American. Do you want? Do you want because of the memory of not seeing it? It's still quite a nice experience of going it there. It was a good experience. I, uh, down on the Champs Elysees. Yes, give me Saturday Night Fever. Saturday night Let's Friday. go. That makes me sound cool as well. <laughs> I like that. Saturday Night Fever is our first poster. Okay, our second poster as we continue down the corridor depicts your worst movie memory. My worst. Well, you tend to reject those, don't you? You tend to Bury put them, them out. Mm. Um, that's my worst movie memory. Huh. Have you ever walked out of a movie, perhaps? Oh, have you I've ever? I've got a funny story about walking out of a movie that involves a big movie star that wouldn't have been my choice, which I suppose I should share with you. I was when I was acting, I was working with Al Pacino uh-huh. when I was nineteen in a film called Revolution, and um, and we we went to the cinema to see Starman. Yeah. Another is that the, Jeff Bridges? Yes, again? Jeff Bridges yeah. as well, and Karen Allen. Mm. And I was really enjoying it, <laughs> and he was like, "Oh my god, this film I can't bear it, so we're leaving." And I was like, "What?" It was the first time I'd ever walked out of a cinema because I even, and, and and he was like, "No, no, I can't. I gotta go." And we we left, and I was like, "Shit!" I never really knew what happened at the end of Starman. I've seen it subsequently since. I was really quite enjoying it, you know, because I like a bit of sci-fi. I think. So that was the first time I remember walking out of a thing. But I remember very early on, I was talking about going to the cinema on Wood Green. It was half term and there was a a Spider-Man film on. Back in the 70s, they made a Spider-Man film. I think I remember, yeah. And it's it's really atrocious. (laughs) And we found a way of bunking into that cinema in the back around Wood Green. And we would go and watch it endlessly. And I would sit there going, this film is so bad. But because we could get in for free... And there was not many other people in there, and you could just run right in there. It was just dark, and no one gave a shit. And you know, there was like five kids in there, just causing havoc. And we just always in there. I remember thinking we went three or four days in a row to see this thing, and would watch it and not watch it. It just feels like an awful, painful memory. <laughs> and I think I've looked it up online since just to confirm how bad it was. And I never, but I never walked out of it. <laughs> never left. Oh, Stayed sad. and watched it. That there's that really, yeah. Underrated, I'm sure. Mm. Spider Man. I mean, this is a tough one because obviously the idea of Al Pacino hating Starman, which as I remember is a fairly innocuous it movie. To I think go... it might have been a more of a personal issue. Right. If we if I'm completely honest. I think that he'd been in a relationship with Karen Allen, dare right. I whisper it. It makes no difference it's on the podcast. And so I think maybe he was like, Ah, oh, I can't I can't just watch this, I can't watch this, I'm out okay. of there. That might have been not, not to say he's, <coughs> you know, deeply emotionally scarred by his relationship with her. <laughs> I think maybe just ah, I've just had enough of it. 
All right, let's put. I'm going to put up both because they're both great. Let's put up the seventy Starman poster next to Starman. Okay. All right. Seventy Spider Man. Seventy Spider Man. Sorry, yeah. seventy Spider Man. Yeah. Well, All right. Third poster we're putting up depicts yeah. the last performance that brought you, Dexter, to tears. The last performance that brought me to tears. Could it be tears of boredom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it can be any kind of tears. The tears are yours no. to decide upon. No. I... In the cinema, I mean, theatrically, it happened to me with Warhorse when I when I saw that at the theatre, and I and I got to say, it kind of had a similar impact to me when I saw it in the cinema as well. Although it was a completely different realization of the of the storytelling, mm. um, but I'm not sure if that was just because when I saw it in the theatre, it, it it touched me so deeply that I'd not I'd not ex I'd not cried for many years <laughs> much to my shame and that sort of opened the floodgates for some reason the the innocence of this animal subjected to war and how that actually was speaking about man's experience it's I that's think, fascinating though yeah. we, I, 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 a lot of people are talking about it on the podcast there, there is this weird reaction that people have to the suffering of animals because yeah. of their innocence and their naivety to what's happening to them that is much more triggering than you know something that happens to a human in a film it's true I, I, yeah I don't know if it's somehow we can I don't know if we feel more protective or whatever it is I, I, I don't know are you quite sh not quite sure what that is it's the same thing I'd argue with with uh, which uh, because I'm not an animal lover per se. I mean, I like dogs and I've had cats in the in my past, but I don't have one now. But I also remember I Am Legend as well when the dog took it in I Am Legend, and uh, that was that was I was like, wow, this is really hitting me. I don't know why this is, you know, because I Am Legends are good. It's okay, yeah. you know, and there's there's some issues with it, but whatever. But that bit particularly, I was like, oh man. She died. That's really, and she turned, and he had to kill her. That yeah, was really oh God, brutal. Oh God, oh God, I'm just remembering the scene when he's got her. <laughs> yeah, he's time. old, and then she's starting to go for him and stuff. And oh. it's, it's hard. It's hard, but it's it's it's. Well done. I'm not quite sure what that is, but I'm trying to think of a performance that that got me like uh, 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 that. I mean, and you can have the dog in I Am Legend. I, I suppose I'll go with that for the time being. The dog in I Am Legend, whose name I can't even remember. That's no. how much I cared. <laughs> uh, uh, Dave, the dog. <laughs> the female dog. Yeah. I'm trying to think. Of, there was a performance, though. Yeah. I'll have to come back to that one, maybe, and yeah. give you a human answer. I like Seems that. fair. I mean, the actors I know. <laughs> Oh, yeah. What's Fletcher? He reacts to dogs. Oh, my God, great. That is true. There's going to be a lot of people who you've both worked with yeah. and are close friends in the industry exactly. who are going to be going, be like, sorry, you picked a dog. A dog, yeah. All right, okay, nice one, Dick. <laughs> It's a it's a powerful scene. I think I read recently that they they are going to do a sequel to I Am Legend, which this is just funny. This is like I love the retro uh, <coughs> retrofitting something. They're using the ending that they didn't use for oh. the movie to then pit do the sequel. So it's I like see. the one that wasn't attached to the movie, the one that everyone goes that was the better that ending that the, you yeah. didn't use. The, yeah, and we're oh, now, really? That's the one we're doing the sequel about. Yeah. So go on YouTube, watch that. that. Is it on YouTube? The other one? Yeah. yeah. Is it? Mm. Oh, it's better. Good. I'm going. That's an interesting. Oh, I'll go and have a look at that this afternoon. Okay. All right. Our final poster then depicts your uh, unpopular movie opinion. My unpopular movie opinion. Um, that, that's that's hard. Isn't it's it? it's a difficult question. That's a difficult question. My unpopular movie opinion. It gets easier from here if I if I might be so bold. Okay. Once we enter the auditorium, yeah. this is the last challenge I'm presenting you. Yeah, it is a, it's a huge challenge. Uh, I can't think of anything to. Um, uh, uh, well, it, uh, it's hard because it's usually attached to something being bad that you love or good. Yeah, you know exactly that, something that I think is bad that other people think is good mm. or. or or someone, you know, and, and that gets you into murky territory because you're suddenly going, <laughs> I, if it, I suppose it's all subjective, isn't it? You know, taste is the thing at the end of the day. That's what we were saying even in the beginning about critics. Um, and what, what works for a lot of people uh, doesn't necessarily always work for the individual. But my unpopular opinion. Um, oh, my God. That the Fablemans was good. 
That's kind of unpopular. Yeah, a lot I of people know. were quite bored by that. Oh, like right, I said, that's not such a no, controversial that, opinion. Are you? Sa- are you? Wait. Are you? I saying, didn't. I didn't. Think, no, I didn't enjoy it. Okay. No, that, I didn't. I that's fine. That is kind oh, of unpopular. Okay. That's, oh, that's okay. So yeah. I'm not too far off the beaten track yeah. there. Yeah. You enjoyed it. I didn't. You didn't. No. Know. So I'm with you on this. So we yeah. we, we 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 can talk about this. Okay. I was. I was. <laughs> I love the scene, and weirdly, it sort of reminds me of potentially why I love the offer, uh, where he's with um, uh, John. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, um, uh, yeah. Uh, David Lynch. Um, no, at uh, the end. No. Yes. Yeah. The, um, John Huston, no? Ford, no. Yeah, Ford. Yeah, Ford. Ford. Yeah, Ford, yeah. Uh, we don't know. Uh, yeah, because we didn't like it. No. <laughs> but that it's scene. A good, that's a brilliant scene. That's a brilliant scene. It's a brilliant scene. Brilliant. Because we're scene. learning something about filmmaking. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh. That Newt is a good character in Aliens. You don't think Newt is a good character? I don't. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Wow. Okay, now yeah. this is this is in my wheelhouse. The um, same, same as I'm not really mad about young John Connor in Terminator 2 either. Right. I'm really not, you know. I get Cameron is, you know, a genius and why, mm. but I could do without it. Terminator 1 for me is a far superior film. The Terminator 2? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, Terminator is a film that I watched in a theatre all on my own when I was 17, 18. I, went, I was working in Newcastle in the theatre and I arrived at, uh, to go to my digs early and I had nowhere to go for like an afternoon and I went to the theatre and they said, well, we've got to deal with the local cinema around the corner. They give free cinema tickets for the matinees and stuff. So they gave me this cinema ticket and I went there with my bags to the and, and I didn't know anything that was on. And mum just said Terminator. So I said, I'll go and see that. And I sat there in the afternoon, there was like three other people. I had no idea what it was about. And I was like, fuck me, this is amazing. This, it blew my mind. I was like, you might know nothing about the Terminator. Come with me if you want to live, you know. And when he first goes through that window at the Club Noir yep. and his fingers go twitch, twitch, and I was like, fuck, <laughs> this, it was amazing. It was amazing. Uh. So, and then I went and saw Terminator 2 at the Arclight, the big dome in, the, in on Sunset. The famous one, yeah. And I flew in, it was the first time in LA, and I flew in and I and I was like, we're going there. And, um, and I was jet lagged and everything, but I was so keen to see it. And I don't know, there was just something, something, it's a bit twee and safe and 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 kind of uh, 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 cynical about let's stick a, a kid in the middle of it all mm. and and make you you know get, I mean I I get why with Ripley you know Newt is really important because the daughter that the, she, the lost, daughter she yeah. lost and and all that and and uh, I mean you know don't get me wrong Aliens in terms of the setup is brilliant and all of that I don't know it just I'm I'm it seems strange to say, but I, they're, 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 they're tough for me, child actors. I, I mean, been I'm, one. <laughs> I'm like, that kid's... <laughs> anyway, it's not fair to them because they're just thrown in, you know, they're doing what they're told to do. Yeah. And and uh, I do enjoy working with them, personally. There's mm. a particular way that I think you've got to do it, but that's just me. But, yeah, I, when, I, when I look back at it, you know, Alien... This is Aliens. I mean, Aliens is obviously... Genius. I mean, you're talking to someone who thinks Aliens is the better film of the two. And I'm, yes, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 yeah. I like, I like, they mostly come at night. Mostly. Yeah. Iconic. Yeah, you, yeah, I know, but the way you said it then, it was like, it was a very good impression of how she did it. <laughs> yeah. And and it's it's profoundly unconvincing. <laughs> <laughs> mostly. <laughs> yeah. My mum's going to say it like this. I, I'm I'm just I'm splitting hairs, but there you go. That's not good that's, un, that is good unpopular opinion. That's good. I wonder whether you've got some. I wonder if you've hit something there because you look from Terminator through Aliens, <clears> and then you get to Terminator Two. It, it is where Cameron started to sort of soften because there's like Aliens yeah. and 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 you know and Terminator is like oh nasty. Yeah. And then by the, as we go through the nineties, it's like okay, well sort of it's sort of softened a bit with yeah. True Lies and then Titanic, and now we're in Ab- I mean, we're on Pandora where everyone just wants it's to hug. Super exactly, it's super <laughs> schmaltzy, and uh, you know that's I mean maybe my problem with the favorite one slightly is that it's, it's schmaltzy, and I'm not yeah I'm not that guy. I'm I'm just not, you know. Give me, give me the jerk and blazing saddles and and Terminator and, and that they that sort of sh- schmaltzless. Yeah, schmaltzless. Schmaltzless. Uh, yeah. Right, I'll put up Aliens and Terminator too because they both have children in. Uh, <laughs> it seems like a, such a 
Such a wanky thing to say. Right, we're at the last set of doors and we're entering the auditorium. Now, before we get to the movie that you may have thought of by now, but at the start you said you haven't decided. Oh, no, Before we get there, though, we've got a few <laughs> other things we're going to play oh, on okay. the big screen. The first thing we're going to play is the trailer for the movie you're most looking forward to. Ooh. Oh. I think it might be Indy 5 at the moment. Yeah. you got faith in James Mangold. I do. Mangold's in. pretty fucking special. Mm. He's good. Um, so, and and Harrison, you know, he's, he's definitely going to be his last outing. I think that, at the moment of things that are floating around, yeah, I'll go with that. Mm. I I'll just, go with that fairly safe pedestrian bet. I don't know that it is. I wasn't convinced by that first trailer. The second trailer, no. however, I was like... Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm in. Yeah, I know, and I, you know, and, I, and you look at it and people go, "Oh, look at the visual effects and stuff." And just having to come back to the back of a movie where the visual effects are everything, and when there's not enough time mm. or resources or whatever the reasons are, I, I can't help but go as a filmmaker. Is like I'm going to allow that. I, I'm going to allow it because there's a lot that goes into it, and there's a lot of there's a lot that makes it really difficult. So. I'm gonna just go and enjoy it and want it to want it to work. I I, I think I go into any film wanting it to work. Because there's this whole thing at the moment, isn't there, about visual effects houses? Basically, Marvel just sort of snaffling them up and then giving them a shit ton of work to do at the eleventh hour because they've changed their mind creatively. And these these visual effects artists are like, Why? that is impossible to do. So then they get many visual effects houses, mm-hmm. and you're going from a sequence where one shot to the next is done by two different visual effects houses. And so uh, it, it, it's, you know, it, there's consistency is really difficult in that way because one might be in India, one might be in Toronto, another one's in Soho, you know, and, and you're working on a, a sequence that has 35 shots on it and each shot, each of those 35 shots is being handled by a different set of people. So that obviously presents presents problems so things come in you've got to send it back they come in they don't consider you send the other shots comparison well I like that one but I'm not liking that it's it's complicated and and there's not enough people doing it it's a, a booming industry if you're sitting around going how do I get into the film industry where's there an opening visual effects you're golden get there now learn to program learn to code you're you're in <laughs> uh, talking about the Indy 5 trailer as well it's uh, I guess it really applied to to Ghosted because there was there were some reviews which I mm. thought was really generous. I mean, we were mm. sort of I was having to go at critics earlier, but like there were some critics that mm. actively chose to not reveal the the plot of Ghosted mm. in it. Mm-hmm. It's that forever question, isn't it? Mm. Studios will go. We need to let people know what they're coming to yeah, yeah. versus. What a surprise it would have been had the plot of Ghost had been revealed to audiences, as some people will yeah. experience it. Yeah, hopefully in in the moment. <laughs> yeah, and and I think you know the, the conventional wisdom or the, the the newfound wisdom rather than conventional is that it's streaming and that people are going to be able to access it immediately, mm. and <coughs> spoilers are less relevant somehow, and, and and you know they market it in a different way. You know I was really shocked that they wanted to put out behind the scenes stuff before the movie came out because that's all content to them. That's that's like that's part of our content, and I'm like, no, that's the stuff that I try to hide. That's not the parts that I put in the film. That behind the scenes stuff you're putting is what I cut out. Yeah. But they're like, well, that's really good content that get that gets people interested, and, and so there's a there, maybe there's a still slight disconnect between how they how they market and and how the filmmaker views that because the filmmaker thing is like, I'm the Wizard of Oz. Here's the fucking curtain. Don't show people what's behind it yet. You know, yeah. that, that, that's, there's a mystique and a magic that you want to <coughs> retain. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they are, yeah, they have been good. I mean, I think now that those embargoes as such are lifted and the cameos are out there and, mm. you know, and that's all good because maybe it will drive more people to go and see. It. I mean, the biggest driver, of course, is when your friends say to you, oh, watch that, it's really good. Yeah. Or don't watch that, it's, it didn't, it doesn't work. You know, they're the... They're the things, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Well, I'm going to play the trailer for Indy 5. Yeah, play that. I'm, I'm going to play the trailer the mood. for Indy 5. In the mood. All right, next up, I'm going to play on the big screen your favourite <coughs> shot or sequence from a movie. Mm. 
I think it might be in, in, in There Will Be Blood when they're following part of the pipeline and then you come across plain view and his brother sitting down or not his brother sitting down at a, at a table um it's a really long beautiful tracking shot it's really lovely it, it, um there's a, there's quite a few in in uh, there will be blood so i think it's gonna i mean you could probably take i, I tell you that also that opening sequence where he sits in the chair and explains who he is to those town people, you know, the fair man. <laughs> that bit of performance, but just that shot of him as well that's just on his face, that for me was really compelling. That was really quite, I, I love that. Um, You've been watching it with Paul Thomas Anderson. Exactly, as well, so that you I will be, be watching like, with hey, hey, mate. You did all right there. You did all right there. <laughs> how, how difficult was that? There's a lot of really beautiful uh, um, composition in that for me. And I think that's sort of like, but again, in, in the other film of his I love, which is Hard Eight, there's a really great opening shot of um, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of Philip Baker Hall from behind Philip Baker Hall. Um, as so obviously Riley um, is sitting on the floor outside the diner and then there's just a tracking shot that comes in. It's really beautiful. Just finds him there sitting on the floor outside. I just fucking love that. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm a bit, I'm a bit, PTA mad uh, and uh, the Coen brothers as well for No Country for Old Men that first sequence where where he's where um, uh, uh, Josh Brolin comes across the shootout there's like no th th that whole sequence and then he goes back you know and and then it gets chased by the dog and or something. there's so little dialogue in it yeah. which I just fucking love that <laughs> I just love that whole so if I could choose a sequence, it might well be that, actually. I could watch that over and over. Okay, well, that's probably going to make it so less awkward, just in case PTA's like... I've, oh, I've, yeah, that's right. Let's go for the coming Brothers. Yeah, right. That's why let's go for the opening of the first 20 minutes of No Country. 20 minutes of No Country. Yeah. All right. I mean, because then, I mean, you know, you're not going to get to the gas station scene, mm. which is, you know, untouchable in terms of, sort of terror. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I love it. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's go with the opening of No Country for Old Men. Okay. Oh, we're nearing the movie. Okay, but first, we are going to print out T-shirts. Oh, yeah. Uh, for yourself oh, and yeah. PTA to walk yeah. away in. And on the T-shirt, it's got yeah. and Dahlia and her friend as well when they come back from well, the other yeah, screen. Yeah. And it's got your favourite movie quote of all time printed, emblazoned oh. on the front of this T-shirt. What is your favourite movie quote? My favourite movie quote is... Match me, Sydney. Not right now, JJ. Which is from Sweet Smell of Success. <laughs> um, it, it, there's a, it goes to a longer quote. It goes comes from a longer quote where Lancaster is sitting there with, um, with with Tony Curtis, and somebody asks Tony Curtis what he does, and and I can't remember. I'm with, I, I can't remember the exact quote, but but Lancaster goes on to describe who who Sydney is um, God I can't remember and he, he really runs him into the, into the ground and he, because he's talking about him being a press agent uh -huh. he's talking about him you know trying to get stuff in his column and it's just a brilliantly beautiful eloquently written speech which I can't remember I'm not even going to attempt to do and at the end of it Lancaster gets out a cigarette and says match me Sydney which he's been doing the whole way through this because because Sydney's been creeping around JJ Hunsinger for this whole time and every time he says match me he lights his cigarette and he just eviscerates him in front of, the, of this senator and and then again at the end he says match me Sydney and and it's it's like his biggest moment of defiance <laughs> when Tony Curtis goes not right now JJ <laughs> it's just a brilliant Brilliant moment. So I, I love that. So if, if I could, if I, if, 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 if Paul Thomas Anderson could have Match Me Sydney and I could have Not Right Now JJ, I'd be, that'd, that'd be, that'd be cool. Done. Work. You've got to find that speech where he's going, Sydney is a man of many talents, all of them dark and nefarious. I mean, he just, he just kills him. It's brilliant. I can't remember the quote, unfortunately. I'm, I'm going to speak to our printers and get two sets of T-shirts oh, made yeah, up. Yeah, it has to be one. A, a call and response. Match me, Sydney. Not right now, JJ. Yeah, yeah. The final thing we are going to do through the wonderful Atmos speakers in this auditorium before we play the movie is play your favourite score or song from a film. 
You know what? I really love the Long Good Friday score. Oh. I think it's Harold Monkman, I think his name is the guy. I think it is, yeah. And I think, and, and it's, there's something really, it's very 80s, but at the same time, it's got this sax on it as well. And I really love it. I, I Whenever I hear it, it's something so evocative about it. And and it's it's a really fine balance, you know, getting to do a score that's so London and specific in its way and it feels like it is and it's it's got a lot of that 90s, 80s you know synth in it dun, 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 you know an echo on it and stuff like that but but then it's got a real sort of heart of of kind of of jazz in it as well with the sax so and and once it gets going it's got this real sort of driving energy to it I I really love it I think there's something I come back to time and time again it's a bit very old and dated but then so am I, so fuck it. So, uh, you know, that's all right. But but Monkman's The Long Good Friday is really worth a, a good listen. I'm sure there's big Zimmer things out there and and um, Jackman's and all these other wonderful guys, but I'd, I'd, I'd go for that. I like that. Mm. I like that. Well, that is it. Right. Yeah. We've arrived then at the final thing. Mm. The movie out of all other movies you have Could decided see. to screen... This evening, well, I say this evening at 2.40 two in the afternoon at the Odeon in Muswell Hill in <laughs> the early 80s. What film are we watching? I'm so tempted to say The Care Bears. <laughs> I'm so tempted just yeah. to... See, but, even Paul Thomas Anderson would go, yeah, this needed rewriting. Yeah, this, uh, yeah <laughs> they need to rewrite. It's, of course, it's tough because you're basically asking what's your favourite movie? And that is the impossible question, as we all know. And and I've said, you know, I don't like schmaltzy, but I wow. think I'm going to have to go with Singing in the Rain. It's very predictable and easy and, you know, but it's formative for me and full of sort of nostalgic uh, memories of, of family and watching it with my dad and just how it's, it's sort of, exposes the film industry and the people within it but it's full of joy and 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 brilliant music and amazing filmmaking mm. you know a sort of uh so I, i'm i'm you know because the thing is you always second guess yourself you know you you go oh i choose to that but then do i say something more exciting like black cat white cat which is this great could me a costa rica film that i love or or, or or no country for old men you know or or there would be blood which is cinematic fucking explosions or or i went and saw you know i remember going to the toronto film festival and seeing gravity and not knowing anything about it and be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> or Terminator for the first time. You know, but this is the thing about it. There is all these amazing cinematic experiences that you have, and some are collective, some are on your own, as all the things that we've touched on, sort of like talking this afternoon. I love uh, Singing in the Rain is your choice, though. Yeah. I, in terms of, like, you talk about, you know, the, the, the filmmaking and, and the choreography and the, and the dancing. Mm -hmm. I forget his name. Do Donald, Donald O'Connor. Donald O'Connor. Oh, that dance that he does where he li does the flip yeah, and uh, like the, the sort of the combination of comedy and phenomenal oh, dancing. Talent. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but also the filmmaking skill of it. You know, it's a sort of, I, you know, and... It just sort of stands up to repeat viewing again and again and again. It's and it, it make it always make you laugh and it makes you care about them and and but there's so much hard work that's got into it. But the film's just full of joy mm. and uh, and so I think if I you know I mean yeah if you really have to. I mean, I'd, I'd be really interested to have that experience with PTA <laughs> to sit and see. He might hate it, which would be really interesting. I, uh, obviously you worked with Hugh Jackman and yes. I, I once got to make a show where we sat and watched his favourite moments from musicals. And obviously you yeah. know how he loves his musicals yeah. and he, one of the ones he picked was Donald O'Connor's dance uh, in... Make Him Laugh. Yeah, make, yeah. that's it, Make Him Laugh. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and watching Hugh Jackman watch that is to watch someone just completely lose themselves yeah, in the moment. Like, and he was just going, this bit, yeah. this bit, yeah, yeah, yeah. this bit. Yeah. For me, it's Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. But Moses, he knows his toes are not roses. Moses supposes his toes are to be. A Moses, a Moses, a rose is a rose. I, that, I love that, but that dance is brilliant. But Donald O'Connor and Kelly in that bit are brilliant. Yeah. Quite brilliant. It's very funny to me. 
Wow, singing oh, in go. the rain. Singing in the rain. Well, no, it's not a cop out. Well, f- 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 no, that's what I like. That's you what go. you Can't want. You it's go. your perfect exactly. cinema trip. Exactly. And that's it. Next to the curtains have closed. The guests are milling out. Well, the guests, that's yourself and PTA and Dahlia, everyone who was in it's that a very auditorium. Full house. It was a very full house. <laughs> They're thanking you for taking them an incredible night out of the movies. But before My you pleasure. go, it's time for our mystery question as oh. we ask, what's in the box? Um, so uh, I've, I've forgotten my actual prop box. So oh. imagine I'm opening a box. Okay. Uh, but I can do that. Mystery question is this. Yeah. Uh, so. If you could pick... Okay, this is the mystery question. I'm yeah. seeing it for the first time. Okay. If you could pick any movie in any genre that you'd like to direct next, what is your dream gig for your next oh, picture? Fuck, the bastard. Because if I say it, it's going to absolutely kibosh it and kill it any chance of it really ever happening. That's the thing. You oh. jinx it to... What, you mean saying a wish out loud? You have to... You're not allowed... Yeah, you like jinxing it, aren't you? It's like, oh, I want to do... And then I'm, yeah, that's never going to happen. Uh, so, so is there something you don't have to tell me? But is there something that you actually there is a genuine answer to that question, as opposed to sort of a, a reaching for the stars dream? There answer. is a reaching for the stars thing. I mean, you've got to aim high. I mean, look, I would, I would give my left. <laughs> thinking, um, thinking to, to to be involved in Star Wars somehow, if that sort of goes ahead, and I'm sure they'll be they'll be uh, trawling through that canon and that that universe still. TV or film? Film. I'd love to do a film. I'd love to be involved in a. Fi- I'd love to do a film. Yeah, I'd love to somehow, but it's finding the right. Thing. But you know, I, 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 but this is it's really tricky because you know I. I could potentially be talking to those people or not, you know, you know, yeah, I, not in a, not in a, you know, just it's a possibility. Mm. Everything's a possibility. You never know. Uh, I, I, so, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Sherlock Holmes three. Yeah, I'd love to <laughs> Sherlock Holmes three. I would love to direct Sherlock Holmes three. Uh, so I wait for Susan to call me, uh, and and and. Uh, and there is other ones as well. But I'm not going to mention. Okay. Because I just was like... That's fine. Anyway. That's fine. And Thank I, you. Though. Like, a, like a, 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 a proper storyteller, you know, that, that famous thing of, you know, you start a movie where you end a movie, but things have changed. You've brought us back from me talking about Sherlock Holmes 3 at the start oh, to yes. you your final perfect. answer there being you Sherlock go. Holmes 3. There it's you the go. it's the perfect arc. There you go. Right then, Dexter, that is it. Your taxi has arrived to ferry you back to reality. But before you leave, let's recap your perfect (laughs) night out at the cinema. So you are going with Paul Thomas Anderson and Dahlia and her plus one at 2.40 in the afternoon in the early 1980s to the Odeon in Muswell Hill. You're sitting at the front of the balcony, which we know the Odeon Muswell Hill has. You're having a sweet popcorn. We're having some opal fruits, which are probably way past their sell-by date. Mm. And you're having a, a, bravely having a hot dog as well. But obviously it's a virtual hot dog, so none of the bad things that potentially could come with a hot dog. We're putting up posters of your fondest movie memory was not seeing Saturday Night (laughs) Fever in Paris. Your worst movie memory was either 1970s Spider-Man or it's not really yours, it's Al Pacino's Starman. <laughs> Your, the last performance that brought you to tears was m- maybe this, but maybe not this, if you thought about it a bit longer. The dog the dying. Dog <laughs> I am a legend. legend. Yeah, I'll go with that. Uh, the post that depicts your unpopular movie opinion is either The Kid in Aliens or Terminator <laughs> 2. That's ruthless, isn't it? It's, I love it. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Uh, the trailer we're playing is for Indy 5. The shot or sequence that you love is the opening 20 minutes of No Country for Old Men. The T-shirts that we're printing for you and PTA say, match me, Sydney. Not right now, JJ. <laughs> we're listening to the score from the Long Good Friday. And finally, we are going to be watching Singing in the Rain. Dexter, thank I'm you. Happy. Thank, thank you. you. That was a great. Um, thank you for giving me that. That was really nice. Are you happy with your perfect trip to the movies? I'm. I'm ecstatic. That's really good. <laughs> thank you. It's wonderful to have you on. Great to see you. Good Thanks to be again. Here. Cheers, buddy.